morning, everyone, and welcome to Mass Appeal. I'm Ashley Cole. And I'm Seth Stutman. And take a look at this jewelry. Isn't it gorgeous? Sparkly, isn't it? Yeah, and so many pieces. We're going to tell you all about them today because one of the hottest trends in jewelry right now, it's vintage. Not antique, but vintage. Everyone's all about the vintage and the costumes. It's so hot right now. We're with Christian Lund. He's the owner of Fancy That Antiques in Wilbraham. Fancy That. Fancy That. That jewelry Fancy is this. so hot right now. Vintage jewelry. Yeah, here you go. So. Vintage jewelry, it's just all the rage. It really has been for quite a while. Um, now, vintage is a time period. It's not just an adjective. It's a time period describing a certain time. Is that right? Right. So like a textbook uh, definition would be 30 to 60 years would be vintage. After that, 60 to about 100 be uh, semi-antique, and then 100 plus would be antique. But we're talking vintage today. Vintage. Yeah, 30 so, to 60. So it's pretty much uh, from the 50s and before-ish are antiques, and the 50s to now are vintage. Pretty much, yeah. And that's hot right now, especially in jewelry. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it goes for antiques too, but uh, what, um, like vintage, like the things right here um, that I have propped up here, what's hot today for vintage is we're talking coral. This is a nice little necklace that is all little pieces of coral that were made. This takes forever to do. Uh, I can imagine. Summer trends, coral, uh, turquoise is, is really hot right now, the uh, turquoise bracelets, necklaces. Uh, vintage, these are cut crystals right here. Uh, these are really flashy. Oh, well, especially under these lights, look at that. Yeah. So, uh, and then also right here, we've got rhinestones. This one's got a mixture of everything in it. This is, this is one of the latest, Say, that's actually. something. This is a real cool piece. It's got everything going on in it. It's got some knit pieces, got some beads, we got rhinestones, we got gold tone. We've got everything. Well, Christian, I don't know if you follow fashion, but on Monday we had a fashion designer here, and he said one of the hottest things for this spring in fashion is big, clunky pieces. It's clunky statement jewelry with bold colors. So that's exactly what we have here. It really is. I was watching the uh, Housewives in New York last night with my wife, and all the, <laughs> that they were wearing, and these are really rich ladies. They're wearing costume jewelry that's really big and bold, like these, you know, bangles it, here. These are, they're, they're like fun. The, they're the statement pieces. They're statements. You're this like, wow, look at me. This stuff's often inexpensive, too. That, which is the nice part. It's not the gold and the diamonds and the silver. It's fun, yeah. Um, it's it's relatively cheap. Some pieces are a little more expensive, but for you know nine dollars, three dollars, fifteen dollars, you can really dull yourself up. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Now, when you're going to yard sales, a lot of times people just throw out a box full of their old jewelry or their their relatives old jewelry. What is it that you should look for if you're trying to find a treasure? Okay. Well. Um, what I look for when I when people come into the shop or if I'm at a tag sale or whatever, I look for pieces that have a little age. So a piece that has maybe some rhinestones in it, like you're holding there, that's an older, that's almost a, that's a semi-antique piece that's vintage to mm -hmm. uh, borderline. That's got rhinestones. It's got some oxidation here, so that's a testament that it's older. I look for some older pieces, because generally the older pieces are rarer and more unique, and there's not so many out there, so it kind of drives the price up. Yes. They're hard to find. But when it comes to personal taste, it seems to me like when it comes to antiques, there's a certain set of rules that you want to look for. But when it comes to vintage, especially jewelry, every lady has a different taste. So you can get whatever you want, and it doesn't matter if it's the right number or if it's 100% gold or silver, because this is all just fun and festive. That's what I like about vintage. A anything really goes. You can do whatever you want. It's very, it's very reasonably priced. It, it's fun. Um, there really are no hard rules to it. It's anything goes, really. Anything goes. Now, when you're talking about antique, that's when it gets a lot more expensive. How would you know? I mean, someone like me, if I went to a yard sale, I wouldn't know the difference between something that's costume, vintage, or antique. Yeah, antique gets a little more comprehensive. Um, again, I, I try to look for pieces that, like this, Ashley, I try to get an older piece that um, you look for the older type of construction or the, the, the uh, what was in back 100 years ago. If you read in the books or see what the ladies are wearing, look for similar pieces when you're out at that tag sale or in a shop or something. Look, like, look for vintage or antique pieces like they wore back then because that really shows you that these are the antiques. Now there's something to be said about being trendy, but there's also something financially to be said about being a trendsetter because once something becomes trendy, the value of it increases. Talk to us a little bit about it that. It really does. It's important to follow trends because, um, you know, there, trends, trends go in cycles. So, so things come in to popularity and really go up in value because everybody wants that one piece or that 
type of design. And there's only a finite amount out there. And you were telling us earlier about 75% oftentimes on average is what the price goes up once something becomes a trend. Yeah, on average about it'll bump up about 75%. So if you don't hit that trend, you can really mess out, especially yeah. if you're in the business trying to make a living off of it. So it's all about knowing what to look for, and now we know to look for something that's big and clunky and vintage, not antique. Okay, can I shop now? Vintage. Yes. Go <laughs> shop. You shop. Help yourself. And I'm going to tell everybody at home that later in the show, we're going to talk <laughs> the differences between gold tone and gold plated. We're also going to learn about industrial antiques, so stay tuned to that. We're back with Christian Lund. He's the owner of Fancy That Antiques in Wilbraham. We're talking about vintage jewelry. But what I want to know, you see a lot of gold pieces. How do you know when it's real gold, when it's fake gold, when it's plated gold, and what does it all mean in terms of how much is it worth? Okay, uh, well, there's a big difference, so it's, it's nice to know how to tell. Um, the difference in value is rather large. Um, traditionally, American pieces are marked 10 karat, 14 karat, 18 karat mm -hmm. for uh, different purities. Um, Gold-plated pieces like you're holding, Ashley, are just a real thin, thin sheet of like a painted, just imagine painting jewelry gold. And you're so, still painting it with actual gold, but you're using a very small amount of it. A very small, it's like a gold leaf. So, uh, you know, I get calls that people want to sell jewelry or something, and they say, you know, I got a lot of gold tone or gold-plated costume, do you buy that? I do, but you're not going to get a lot of money because there's just not a lot of gold content there. Right. Now and when, that's what this would be. When you see these pieces, you said something's going to be written on them. Where is it often written? There's no singular spot, is there? Well, some pieces, like the antique pieces, are not marked. After a certain a time, the government, uh, you had to mark pieces of costume uh, or not or fine jewelry. When it's, yeah, when it's 14 karat, when it's 10 karat, right. you need to let the consumer know. Yeah. But older pieces don't have those markings. Right. For costume jewelry, they are some are marked, some are not marked. Some are Avon, some are like Schiaparelli, some real high-end Italian things. Um, those can actually be worth more than gold, the designer pieces of costume jewelry, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow, hmm. is there anything here worth uh, a whole lot of money? Uh, we don't have anything that's super high-end uh, designer here right now. Uh, there are similar pieces like the pieces hanging up here, like this one is a, like the Chaparelli I was talking about. Mm -hmm. They did pieces just like this. And they're so popular that they're remaking them today. So yeah, th this stuff's hot right now. Uh, it's real important to, to take like a little magnifying glass down there and look at a piece real closely and see if it's marked with a name or not because there's a big difference in value. Now Christian, if things aren't marked and people, you know, say you inherit a jewelry box and you want to know if it's the real deal or if it's gold plated, there's testing you can do but people at home shouldn't be doing it on their own. Probably not because it's uh, nitric acid that you use and it's really, it's corrosive. It'll eat into your skin and turn it yellow and it'll fall and off. And there's also a chance you might damage <laughs> the, the material too. I mean, True, your, your yeah. hand health is important. If, so it bring it starts, to a professional? if it starts smoking, yeah, it, like people come in, I'll, if they want to sell something, I'll, I'll go through it or go to a reputable jeweler and we can test it with the acid. So leave it to a professional. And now this little... magnifying guest glass doubles as a necklace. It sure does. So if you're going do to your that. little tag sales, bring one of those and go, hey, do you have any jewelry? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, later in the show, Christian, you're going to talk to us more about industrial antiques, and that's often associated with steampunk, and that's a word people are talking about these days. Yes, steampunk. It's very popular. The Springfield Museums actually has a steampunk exhibit. Check it out. We are back with Christian Lund from Fancy That Antiques in Wilbraham. Now we're talking about industrial antiques. What does that mean, Christian? Industrial really came from the term the Industrial Revolution where between 18, 1760 and 1820, people were going to more mechanical things, really whitt from whittling things f from wood to going uh, to like steam powered and, and metal. Um, and then going from like cattle that would pull things or push things uh, to steam power or something like that. That's where industrial came from. So we've got, uh, I brought a couple pieces from the new shop today. Um, this is. This is considered industrial. This is actually a vintage Globe Wernicke file cabinet that, uh, with an Italian marble top that I, I redone. This was, uh, this was a real rusty, it was a nasty piece I found in a barn. 
really? which is pretty cool. Yeah, found, found it in a barn in upstate New York a few weeks ago. And uh, I took a metal grinder and just ground this down, put no a way. pattern in it, put some polyurethane over it. I thought it was wood up it until just now. It looks like wood, but it's metal and it weighs a ton. You know what I wow. will say? This is one of those things. This and armoires are more often than not the things that you see at yard sales or on the side of the road that people are trying to get rid of. But you can really refurbish it to make it look pretty cool. Yeah, I have fun doing it. It's great. Um, and the neat thing about this stuff is you don't really find it in this area. You'll find it down in New York City with huge price tags or, or online. But um, I decided to actually try to use this stuff, find it, and then put it in the shop so people can just go and buy it and well, find it themselves. And, and I find it interesting that there's not a lot here because Springfield w was booming during the Industrial Revolution. It, not only Smith and Wesson and, and the car manufacturing, and there was so much happening in that time period. So it's amazing that a lot of things aren't here anymore. True, even like Holyoke with the, the textiles. It was the whole yeah. industrial revolution. This place was just an epicenter. It was just a, it was really a world superpower. So it's kind of cool to bring that back again and, and use these pieces. For example, uh, you guys, I, I picked this out of a house yesterday. It went on a house call in Springfield. I found this up in the attic. This is an old barn light that um, I actually put one of these off of our garage. And it's mm -hmm. neat to, to tie the old world into the new. This is a neat, uh, lamp that would go on a post and you'd hang it right, right It's really barn. neat to see and I'm sure a lot of people do have these industrial antiques in their home but they may not think they're worth anything right because sometimes it may not look like much. Well it looks like junk and traditionally it's in the garage or the attic or in the basement and those are things that you probably wouldn't want to throw away and if you do try to sell them to somebody like that can yeah. do something amazing <laughs> like this. Yeah. Right? I, I have an aesthetic question for you because a lot of times, you know, you walk into a store and you see an item and you say, man, that would look really cool. But then sometimes if you get one item home, if the rest of your house doesn't look like that, it looks out of place. Could you incorporate some of these items? Would you need more than one? How would you do it? I like to uh, do an eclectic mix. Um, yeah, I like to bring more than one piece home. So, so just a few pieces of each Yeah, era. so for example, like I did this, this, this is an antique floor grate. I took a metal grinder, took the rust off, put a clock on it, and a clock movement, so it actually keeps time. So it's a real you flip clock. Flip it around. So you can hang it on the wall. How cool is that? You can also accent this piece, like if you put it on the wall, um, you can, this is an old bar stool that um, is metal down here, w distressed wood top. This would kind of blend your room together so it and not it just together. be that one piece, but yeah, kind of disperse it and mix it in. And it's not something that anyone else has. That's the cool thing. It's one of a kind. Yeah, that's, that's the cool thing. You just don't find this stuff around. That's why I really love it. I'm pumped mm. about it. Yeah. I, it, could, I can tell. I was going to say, you're passionate. Your I'm pumped. Decorated. I love this stuff. So whether you're interested in this or whether you're interested in the costume jewelry that we talked about earlier in the show, all you need to do is go to mymassappeal.com later today to find out all this information and so much more. All right, so change